AC0 with the Micro V2 actually, looking beautiful. And this is analog, um, uh, same setup as before. The camera's a little bit different, a little lower quality. Uh, I had to change the setup really quickly, but right now we're just testing the, the signal quality. This is a heavy Wi-Fi area and they're both on R1. We're flying away from myself, maybe, I believe it's 650 feet to the back of this school here. Again, this is a brick school. And we're going to do kind of a torture test here. Going to go around the school fully, block the signal, turn the quad around, and see how both uh, systems handle the image. This should be interesting. Coming around here. Okay, they're both maintaining pretty well up, to, up Ooh, until this yeah. corner here. Yeah, and yeah. I, yeah, I know which one I'd rather fly. <laughs> and I'll uh, just play this in slow motion here. Yeah, play this in slow motion. And may I add, actually, this is with the TVS uh, at max power. So this isn't yeah. the 800 milliwatt. Right, this is 1.5 watt. 1.5. Um, analog. And now we're yeah. flying even further away. Um, just seeing how both of them handle the signal here. Just some multipathing, some blocked signals. And they both get bad over here, but this is where things will get really interesting here too. You're gonna see exactly how well HC0 maintains an image here going over these bushes. Look at the difference there. Uh, that again, I went through that completely blind on analog. That was just memory. Yep. Yeah, and it, it just goes to black and white so quickly on analog. Yep. And uh, as an example of just how bad the signal is here, I had to turn around here not because uh, either VTX was at the max range because past that yellow sign right there, uh, tracer will fail safe. So yep. I can just go around it a little bit, and that's about it. If I go any further, Tracer will feel safe. So I had to turn around. Coming here and... Ooh, man, that's nasty. Completely oh, wow. lost it. Oh, yes. Crashed, and that was done for that. Now, there's another section here in this flight that was a little bit difficult. So I did fly the analog quad back again, and I'm flying just straight to this next location where we're going to see how they handle going off into one of the streets. Having multi, there's a total of six houses blocking the signal when I do this. Okay, so we're going to turn around here, and both quads are going to go around this corner, and we're going in. Very That's similar to Yep, you lose that color really fast. You wouldn't fly either quad out here, but I actually felt pretty confident with the HD zero here. You see how much my analog is jumping up and down. Yeah. yeah, jumping up, uh, you have syncing, syncing issues. Uh, the multipathing makes it really difficult. And mind this you, this is rapid 500 fire, yeah. more. Yeah, rapid fire with 500 more milliwatts. And I would actually say the 500 milliwatts sometimes made it worse than good. Oh, yeah, because of multipathing. From yeah. Output. Yep. Yeah, very so interesting. That. So I am standing right there. In, in okay. this nook, um, doing my best to kind of orient the patch so that it was the same for both. So like with analog, uh, the patch is kind of off to the left a little bit to my face. So I kind of angled it that way. And I, I always do a good job of uh, making sure I have my head level and not okay. looking straight at the ground like a lot of people do, because that does <laughs> really reduce the effectiveness of the patch antennas. Oh, yes, especially with HD0 having four antennas that it's mixing. Yeah. I've noticed that it's a little bit more sensitive when you have an imbalance in the signal. So it's playing through here. Yeah, got R8 on the Freestyle VTX and uh, R7 on the analog, uh, running independently, not at the same time. Okay, good. And then the other wow. tests I did, I did them at the same time where I put... Uh, the freestyle on R1, and then okay, wow. analog R8. I did measure the analog with uh, the power meter, and it was showing actually it was strongest on the R8 channel. Wow, really? Yeah, it depends Funny. on the on the VTX. Yep. Yeah, I would guess they all work a little bit differently. Yeah, but you can see. It's even kind of so, a, it's kind of a horror show, and you lose all the color. And to be honest, even with I know it's supposed to be like what 
six, maybe like six fifty on average milliwatts on channel eight for the HD zero. And if you look at it, what's crazy is, in my opinion, it took the win there. Oh, it definitely did. Yeah. Even at the very limits, the only thing I would say it's gonna come down to what the pilot prefers on. You know that that black and white, very kind of squinty image. You got to squint at it to see it, or if you can like tolerate the digital pixels. Which, in my opinion, I can, I can tolerate the HD zero breakup. I think it's something you get used to over time. Yeah, I agree. So here I'll, I'll try uh, playing it in slow motion. Is that coming across all right for you? Oh yeah. On the HD zero side, it's coming across very nice. Yeah, and if you slow it down even more, you can see, you can see how HD zero has more like frames it's actually displaying, and the analog is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm using the nice 60 frame per second DVR on the Sky Zone. Oh, okay. So I think you are too, though. No, mine is the is the version one for the Sky O4X. Yeah, so I've got the V2 like the best analog DVR you can get, I think. Yeah, it pretty much is. Even the one that I have was technically the best until that one came out. Yeah. But the yeah, analog is interesting. The important, the important thing here is the average frame. Because you can have one, one frame that can be horrible, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're pausing frame by frame, but when you're looking at a series of, say, 40, 50, 60 frames, it, it, it's like most of the frames on HD zero are crystal clear and analog is just this constant wave of just flashes and color shifts. Yeah, the image even moves sometimes. Right. Yep. And sometimes you get a sync loss and it starts rolling and then you're basically screwed at that point. And that doesn't always come across on actually the DVR. Right. On some of the tests that I did, I actually had uh, a loss of sync and had some image roll that didn't come up on the DVR. It'll just look like a little quick, a quick little glitch on the on the recording.